Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Daryl D TV. I'm your host, Daryl D. And uh, as I was getting dressed today, I threw on my Envisions t-shirt and it got me to reminiscing about the old days in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'll get back to Envisions in just a second, but <clears throat> it reminded me of the old mixtape days in in Milwaukee among other places um, I'm a huge fan of mixtapes and I have a very large collection and I remember like just looking throughout the 90s a lot of times they were uh, too expensive for me to indulge on a regular regular basis but I did accumulate you know a nice collection back then um, a lot of times the mixtapes were anywhere between 10 and 20 dollars and of course I stay far away from the, the 20 dollar pieces but um, there was quite a few places because they were the thing they were popular so they were pretty much everywhere um, when I would travel to Atlanta Georgia uh, they would be all over the flea markets um, the, you'd always see, you know, somebody with at least a case, meaning, uh, you know, the little wooden cases you hang on the wall that hold about a hundred tapes. You'd see those all over the flea markets and the swap meets. And uh, with a lot of the, you know, the down south DJs, the DJ jellies, and uh, you know, the DJs like that. And then when I would travel to uh, places like uh, different cities in Michigan, um, Chicago, you know, was, was real heavy on that. I know you could go to Gramophone Records and they would have just a, an abundance of mixtapes. They'd have t a ton of stuff. But it was no different in, in my hometown of Milwaukee. You could also find a number of places that carried mixtapes there. Um, and Envisions was one of those places. Uh, back in the mid-90s, I used to do a, a show on public access called Daryl's DJ Spotlight. And I would go around to different parts of the city. And I would just uh, record, you know, DJs in their element. Whether it was a club, whether it was in their bedroom or basement, uh, whether it was at a business, a store, record store, or whatnot, I would just record all of this stuff and put it on my show. Um, which leads me to uh, Envisions. And Envisions was one of three places that had an abundance of mixtapes. Um, I got in good with those guys back in the day. And. Um, I remember they had an extremely large display behind the glass of just hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of mixtapes. And you had as many, back in those days, there was as many house music mixtapes as there were rap mixtapes. There were as many freestyle mixtapes as there were rap mixtapes and I specifically remember buying uh, the DJ Cash Money Hollywood Head Twister mixtape in there. It was pretty expensive. I think it was like maybe $16. Maybe it was a little, little cheaper than that. I still have it though. Um, but that was one of the, the, the many places that you could get them. But they, they were one of the the places that had the biggest displays in the city and I don't exaggerate when I say that there was only a few um, another place in the city was uh, a place called spontaneous uh, spontaneous was um, an incredible store and the thing about spontaneous and envisions was that they were both uh, owned by Latinos um, and a lot of the things that they sold were from the Latino slash Hispanic culture so you would see a lot of uh, 
graffiti videos, a lot of uh, lowrider magazines, uh, as well as videos and um, lowrider bicycle parts. You will see a lot of the fashions that they would wear, like uh, Joker and whatnot, and sell stuff like the little homies and, and things of that nature. But you would also find a lot of music that was uh, Latino or Hispanic oriented. And it was, to this day, it is, those two places were the biggest businesses, um, biggest well-rounded businesses, uh, music related and fashion related that have dealt uh, or specialized, I should say, in the Latino culture, in the Hispanic culture. And um, Spontaneous had a huge, huge mixtape selection as well. Um, that was another place that I took my camera in there and I would uh, record the DJs in there. And uh, the guy that owned that, we got real cool. And I still have, I was given t-shirts from Spontaneous hoodies from spontaneous that I still own from this day now this shirt from envisions is a newer shirt but I have the original shirt that they gifted to me back in 96 97 some some time in there so um, just two incredible stores both of them were on the south side um, both of them expanded spontaneous unfortunately is no longer around I'm not sure exactly when they closed uh, I moved away in 1998 and sometime in between there uh, sometime after 1998 is when they closed down when I would go back home after they closed I would see them at the flea market um, selling merchandise out at a uh, seven mile fair and uh, so I would run in there, I would still grab mixtapes from them. It was nice seeing the guys. There was um, the different DJs that, that worked in there that were affiliated with their, with them. Um, I would run into those guys when I would come into town. Um, Envisions is still around. They are still going after all of these years. Um, about, I would say maybe seven eight years ago I had to fly home for a funeral and um, after the funeral we all met at my cousin's house which was on the south side so as I was making my way to the south side uh, I actually passed by Envisions and that's when I realized that they were still open still in business so I decided, you know what, let me stop in there and let me see if they still have any of those mixtapes, maybe in the basement or in storage. And I'll ask them, you know, if they have some, uh, yeah, I'm interested in buying some. So I go in the store and I am in complete shock because all of those original display cases were still there still in the same place and still full of mixtapes I mean full I couldn't believe it uh, so I was like I got a will and deal because there were more than enough for me to add to my collection um, I figured you know let me see what kind of deal I can uh, you know I can I can arrange with them so I asked to speak to the manager, a uh, nice young lady. I think her name was Mary Bell or something like that. Sorry if I mispronounced her name. Um, and we just did some willing and dealing, willing and dealing. And by the time we uh, got to a price where we were both satisfied with, I realized that, you know, for this price I'm getting, I can get everything that I want to add to my collection and then I can get a lot more that I could actually resell so I think that particular day I spent about five hundred dollars and I believe I went in there the very next day 
and I spent another 300, 350, and I just grabbed a lot of, of tapes, um, added a ton of tapes to my collection, and I also ended up reselling um, many of them on eBay at the time, when I was actually on eBay. Um, if you're ever in Milwaukee, make sure you look them up in Visions. And uh, hopefully, spontaneous, maybe I just haven't run into them or I haven't looked into it, but maybe they're still around, I'm not sure. Uh, but ask around because spontaneous was incredible. And every time I would come into town, I would go in there and I would talk to those guys and I'd go like, hey man, you guys need to open a store in Phoenix, Arizona. You need to open a store in Phoenix because there's nothing like that out there in that entire city there's nothing like it now don't get me wrong phoenix has a lot of latino and hispanic owned businesses there's a lot of businesses that cater to music there's a lot of businesses that cater to hip-hop culture meaning rap music graffiti uh, there's a lot of stores that cater to hispanic and latino toy collecting a lot of stores that deal with uh, DJing but there's not a store there's never been a store at least in the time that I've lived in Phoenix that you had everything under one roof I mean everything so when it came I'm talking about fashion I'm talking about vinyl I'm talking about mixtapes I'm talking about graffiti videos and, and spray cat caps and spray paint and and uh, uh, different uh, magazines dealing with the culture, uh, the whole low riding culture stuff, and all of the brands that you see a lot of Hispanic uh, people wearing, a lot of the street br brands that you see uh, Latino people wear, there was no place in Phoenix that had all of that under one roof. So I used to tell those guys all the time, you need to open a store, man, open a store, you'll make a mint. There's a lot bigger Latino culture out in Phoenix than in Milwaukee. There's a lot bigger uh, Hispanic uh, community out in Phoenix than there is in Milwaukee. You will make a mint, but it never happened. Um, but anyway, I got a lot of love for both of those stores. They've always showed me a lot of love. I wish I could remember everybody's, everybody by name, um, but I can't. I wish I could remember all those DJs I used to chop it up with, but I don't remember everybody's name. Um, but I definitely wanted to spotlight those two stores because when I think of mixtapes, those were two of the biggest selections in the entire city. Now the third uh, store that I want to spotlight was a store called The Scratch Pad. Um, if you were a DJ in Milwaukee throughout the 90s, early 2000s or whatever, everybody, you knew about The Scratch Pad. Everybody knew about The Scratch Pad. Everybody was in The Scratch Pad at one time or another, at one point or another and the scratch pad was known for catering to the dj culture that's where you went and got records that was one of the many places keep in mind back then there was a lot of record stores still going strong um but the scratch pad catered to uh the mobile dj the the club dj you know the house party DJ that's where you went to get all of those rap records um, they had a huge selection of mixtapes as well in fact in their first location there was like a little room that you had to basically window shop they didn't let anybody in there and then if you wanted something in there you know they would open it up and grab it for you and then their second location uh, that they moved to it was basically like a big glass wall 
and you still couldn't handle any of the tapes but it was like they were all like behind this glass but when I tell you there was like hundreds and hundreds of, of mixtapes in there and I just remember seeing like all the tap money's mixtapes like in a row volume one two three four five six, just rows and rows and rows and shelves and shelves and shelves of beautiful mixtapes the scratch pad was expensive everybody know that it's not a secret so I actually cannot think I cannot remember rather if I've ever bought a mixtape from the scratch pad because they were so expensive while everybody else was selling tapes for seven eight nine ten dollars scratch pad was selling them for 13 14 15 16 so and it was like that with a lot of their vinyl I mean their vinyl was expensive it was you know I myself whenever I would go to the scratch pad for records I stop at radio doctors first radio doctors was this huge store that was like a block or two away and so I go in there because they were cheaper get everything I need out of there and then I will go over to the scratch pad to see what they had in there but um scratch pad they specialized in DJ equipment you could go there and buy your mixers and your needles and your you know your 1200s and whatnot you could get all of that at the scratch pad in addition to vinyl they also carry like lighting equipment and you know disco balls and all of that kind of stuff um, record uh, bags record uh, crates and um, things of that everything that dealt with the uh, DJing um, business you could buy at scratch pad they were very well known for their equipment and they were very thorough with what they held fantastic store I mean excellent excellent store but um, anyway these were the three stores in Milwaukee in those days that had the biggest selection of mixed cassettes nobody as far as volume nobody else in Milwaukee could even come close to those three stores so this video is dedicated to the scratch pad it's dedicated to envisions It's dedicated to spontaneous because they not only had an incredible uh, selection of just everything in hip hop culture and DJ culture, but also they had, they catered to their perspective cultures in itself. Uh, Scratch Pad kind of catered to everybody in the DJ culture while Spontaneous and Envisions uh, cater to everybody in the Hispanic culture and everybody in the Latino culture which was a beautiful beautiful thing for back then so big ups this video is all about um, memories of those mixtape days and of course back then I I, uh, I didn't uh, get to go to New York the mixtape capital so I didn't get to experience New York City and what they had to offer I've heard all of the stories about it but uh, I'm sure it was completely insane back then but uh yeah that's what's up that's all for today man thank y'all for listening this is Daryl D reminiscing about the mixtape days and I'll see you next time on Daryl D TV peace and love